Hello, my name is Dick Baldwin. I'm a professor at Austin Community College in Austin, Texas, and I want to welcome you to my online lectures for ITSE 2321 Object Oriented Programming using Java. This series of lectures will approximate the lectures that I normally deliver in the classroom each semester. When completed, this series of online lectures will consist of approximately 32 hours of video material broken down into 15 different lectures. Each lecture, in turn, will be broken down into segments that are approximately 15 minutes in length to satisfy the YouTube length requirements. This, this is the beginning of part one of lecture two titled Image Processing, Algorithms, Image Inversion, and Picture Explorer Objects. I invite you to visit my college website at the URL which I am highlighting now. That is where you will find the syllabus for this course as well as other online information regarding the course. I also invite you to visit my personal website at the URL that I am highlighting now. When you visit that website, you will find more than 600 tutorials that I have written on various aspects of computer programming, digital signal processing, and other computer-related topics. Students enrolled in this course are expected to study my tutorial lessons numbered 1600 through 1630 which can be found at the URL that I am now highlighting. In addition to the material in the course textbook. So without further delay, let's enter the world of object oriented programming. As mentioned earlier, this is part one of lecture note or lecture number two titled image processing algorithms image inversion and picture explorer objects in this lesson you will learn about the picture explorer object and you will also learn how to implement a color inversion algorithm you can see the results of color inversion in the image on the right hand side of your screen. One way to think of object oriented programming is that it is a form of software component programming. An object oriented program is analogous to an electronic assembly such as a computer. The individual objects in an object-oriented program are analogous to the electronic components that are used to manufacture the computer. A collection of standard electronic components can be used to produce a computer. The individual types of electronic components in the collection can also be used in other collections that are used to produce other different kinds of electronic assemblies such as different kinds of computers. A collection of standard software components that we refer to as objects can be used to produce an object-oriented program. In addition, the individual types of software components in the collection can also be used in other collections to produce 
different kinds of object-oriented programs. In other words, a software component of a given, given type may be used in many different kinds of object-oriented programs. The object-oriented programmer has certain advantages over the computer designer. For example, the computer designer is usually constrained to use components that were manufactured by another company. On the other hand, the object-oriented program, programmer has access to the blueprints and can manufacture her own software components. Also, the computer designer is usually constrained to use components that were previously designed and manufactured by others. If a component isn't in the catalog, it can't be used by the computer designer. However, the object-oriented programmer can start from scratch to design and manufacture new types of software components that never existed before. In addition to the electronic components, the computer designer needs certain incidental supplies such as wire and solder paste and glue, etc. These incidental supplies are required to assemble the components into a working assembly. In addition to the standard and custom software components, the object-oriented programmer needs incidental structures such as if statements and loops and operators to use for the purpose of assembling the software components into a working object-oriented program. In this lecture, I will show you how to write a specific object-oriented program that I refer to as PROB02. For this program, the student has provided an image file named prob02.jpg along with a pair of Picture Explorer window images. One of those images shown on the upper right hand portion of your screen shows the raw image with the student's name inserted. Here you see my name near the upper left hand corner of the image. And the bottom image on the right hand side shows a modified version of the image. In this problem it is the student's responsibility to begin with the raw image insert her name at the location that I am pointing to now and then apply a particular color inversion algorithm to produce the image shown on the bottom right side of your screen. The student's first challenge is to deduce the algorithm required to convert the image on the upper portion, the upper right portion of your screen to the image on the lower right portion of your screen. To accomplish this, I would expect the student to begin with the Picture Explorer object on the upper right portion of your screen and use that Picture Explorer object to find the color values for pixels at various locations in the image. The required output image shown on the bottom right of your screen is also a picture explorer object. I would expect the student to use that picture explorer object 
to determine the color values at the same locations in the output image that were measured using the input image on the top right of your screen. Knowing the color values at corresponding locations on the input image and the output image, I would expect the student to be able to deduce the algorithm required to transform the input image into the output image. Having deduced the required algorithm, the second challenge for the student is to write the code to implement the algorithm once it is established and to satisfy some requirements for text output on the command line screen as well. Among other things, this would require that the student be able to create a picture object from an image file, write an accessor method to return a reference to the picture object, modify the pixels in the picture according to the algorithm, display the raw picture in the modif and the modified picture in Picture Explorer objects by calling the explore method on the picture object before and after it is modified. To summarize, this means that the student must be able to begin with the given image file and the given driver class shown on the right side of your screen. The student must be able to add her name and display the image showing now on the right hand side of your screen. The student must be able to deduce and implement the algorithm necessary to display the image now showing on the right hand side of your screen. And finally the student must be able to display the text which is now showing on the right hand side of your screen. Now let's turn our attention to the algorithm that is required to transform the image on the upper right side of your screen to the image on the lower right side of your screen. This is a variation on an inversion algorithm. Barb Erickson explains the inversion algorithm in her excellent textbook. Therefore, I wouldn't consider it a great stretch for the student to be able to figure this out. The required algorithm is to set the blue color value for every pixel to zero and then to invert the red and green color values for every pixel. The color value for a pixel is obtained or the, in, the, the color value for a pixel is inverted by subtracting the value from 255. More specifically, each pixel contains a red color value, a green color value, and a blue color value. Each color value can be independently inverted by subtracting the value for that color for each pixel from 255.